City. Hello everyone and welcome to the one-on-one sessions with Gogo Musare and I'm your host Gogo Anne. Give you guys tips, lessons and teachings on everything spirituality. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about my personal favorite water spirits. We're going to be water spirit. We're going to be talking about the Nzusa spirit and before I get into it, um, I want you guys to understand that there are a number of water spirits, most of which I have already spoken about in some of my videos, but this one I wanted to go into details with it because it's just that interesting. Okay, so we have the Mdao spirit. We all know about the Mdao. Eh? We have the Balozi spirit. Balozi is a very, guys, it's underrated. Like, I feel like people don't give this spirit enough, like, snaps than it deserves okay it's a prophetic spirit we will get into details with it very soon as well we also have the nzusa spirit which is the one we're going to be talking about we have the mermaid spirits i've made a video about that one as well we have the inkanyamba the video is there as well so today we're going to be going into details with the nzusa spirit everything there is to know about the nzusa spirit is here well everything that we are allowed to know because one thing you guys need to know is that the Nzusa spirits are very rare and very secretive spirit, okay? It's very secretive. And one thing about people that are governed by Nzusa is that you can share about it, like, to a certain extent. You cannot go into full details about what the spirit is all about because it is very secretive, it is very private, and the people that, gov that are governed by it know better than to go around telling everyone what goes around with it about where it's found about what happens when it finds you all those things okay it sounds like i'm talking about the boogeyman but it's not really that bad even if it finds you it's not like your world is gonna crumble or anything like that as a matter of fact it's one of it's a very good spirit okay so it's very secretive it's very rare only like if a handful of people are governed by the spirit that's one thing i can tell you and attest to and just emphasize only a handful of people are governed by the spirit it is a very protective spirit like when you are governed by this spirit know that you are highly protected it will do everything in its power to protect you it will do everything and lastly um it it doesn't want evil okay it doesn't want evil if you are a healer who is governed by the nzusa spirit and you do evil things then know it will turn your back it's back on you because one thing about it is that it does not allow evil doings when you are governed by it you need to do good things you need to help people the right way like how you're supposed to you're not supposed to go like a bit over edge or just a little bit it is a very strict spirit it comes with the gift of prophecy dreaming okay i don't like the term dreaming um visions having visions that's what i refer to most of the dreams that we have as spiritually gifted people so it comes a form of prophecy the form of visions and it's a very healing spirit um it's so healing that sometimes even the people that are governed by the spirit don't need to actually take herbs or any of those things just their presence alone is extremely healing okay um it comes with its own divine bones some people actually find divine bones coming from that spirit like they could get it from a river or maybe they could be in their house and divine bones would just pop out of everywhere but their divine bones are very different from the normal divine bones that usual sangomas use and sometimes you find people like a well-skilled healer will find it very difficult to actually interpret the bones that the Nzusa spirit comes with, okay? And lastly, it sings. <laughs> it sings. It's It loves singing. Even the people that are governed by it, if you ask them about the dreams that they have about the Nzusa spirit, they'll tell you that, you know, most of the times it sings to us, which is actually pretty cool, Um, okay? So the Nzusa spirit is a water-based spirit. It it is only found in the water, in spiritual waters, rivers, dams, lakes, everywhere that is spiritual. And what Nzunza means is that it means um reed bed. Reed bed. Um, if you guys know what reed bed is, game Klaganoga. Um, so the reason why it means that is because every single person who is governed by the spirit is supposed to have the plant with them they're supposed to go and collect that plant and have it in their yard and the reason why they're doing this is like bringing the spirit into the home into their homes okay so it is described as reed bed because it's so much connected with this um 
Litlakanuka, the red bed, and even when you have it, you might find where some people who have the Nzuza spirit are required to walk around with a red bed or just have it there. Some even are required to have wool tied around the whole red bed because like i said it's very prophetic as much as it can use divine bones and we all know that wolves um yarn is um a prophetic thing like mitlamo and stuff like that it's a prophetic um thing so you might find out they might even want that person to have the string tied around the reed bed which you will have which is gonna be a representation of this spirit okay and one thing you need to know is that the nzusa spirit is linked to almost all what does it is linked to all of the water spirits It's very much linked to all of the water spirits um it's sort of like it communicates with them um the way that i see it, there's a hierarchy in this spiritual thing especially with the water spirits né? <sighs> there's a hierarchy in terms of um this water spirits because the nzuza is like at the top it is the major arcana then then comes them Dao, the Balozi, the all the other water spirits coming down after this. So it is so much linked to all the other spirits, all the other water spirits that sometimes you might find that when you have Nzusa, you cannot have Nzusa and not have the other water spirits because they coexist, they work together in a way. So that is why sometimes you can have Nzusa spirit along with them Dao spirit, but them Dao spirit that is usually connected with Nzusa even more is the prophetic Mdawa spirit. Okay, because remember, Mdawa spirit, yes, they use divine bones, and Mdawa does not go without um Nguni, but at the same time, them Dao people do not need to feel bones, they speak through intuition, they talk to you through intuition, so you'd find what it you can have Mdawe spirit, you can have Nzusa and this Nzusa walks around with Mdawe spirit. Or you can have the Nzusa which um is um parking which comes with the Inca Nyamba. Okay, I talked about the Inca Nyamba in my previous video. That is the water serpent. So that is why certain people that have the Nzusa spirit will also have dreams whereby they are seeing the Inca Nyamba or are obligated to walk around the Inca Nyamba before any of you guys start being on like what the because i know i made a video about it but do remember that in that video i did emphasize that there are people that are born with the inca nyamba spirit okay and those people that are born with it to heal okay so that is the inca nyamba that these people with the nzusa spirit uh they have in a way okay and um another thing about the spirit it's a spirit of wealth it is a spirit of, it is a spirit of wealth it is a spirit of protection. It is a spirit of great power. When you have the Nzusa spirit, one thing you should know is that financially, you are straight up good. You don't need to worry about finances. The, the, the thing, the spirit comes with a lot of wealth, abundance, a lot of luck. People with the Nzusa spirit are very, very, very lucky. It is very protective. No harm can happen to you. You will not die until unless it's your time to go. Like they will make sure that they protect you as much as they can. They will guide you and protect you from anything or anyone might, that may try to harm you. And lastly, um, it is of great power. A person with Nzusa spirit. The one thing I love most about people with Nzusa spirit is that most of them they do not really need to do much to tell you about your life. They don't really need to do much. Um, they can literally just look at you and know every single thing about you which is kind of cool <laughs> okay so there are animals that are associated with the spirit as well we all know that every single ancestral gift or spirit that governs a person has its um how do i put this it's totem okay so with the nzusa spirit the snakes but it's a very very big huge snake sometimes it could be like a, an all black black an all black snake and other times it can be a brown python and in very rare occasions you'd see like this beautiful white glittery diamond like snake né? but one thing you should know is that they are always big they are very big when they are angry yo you'll be running away getting chased by a huge snake and <laughs> It's kind of thrilling to think about it then. Number two, mermaids are also very much linked with the spirits. Okay, that is why people with the mermaid spirit and people with the Nzusa spirit sometimes find it very hard to differentiate to differentiate between which spirit they have because people with the Nzusa spirit tend to see mermaids a lot. 
they see mermaids almost all the time because like i said these gifts are interlinked they are linked to each other in so many ways and it's it's beautiful man thirdly a crocodile but one thing i've noticed about the crocodile yanzuza is that it's not like that crocodiles that come with like all the other spiritual gifts because you'll see a crocodile when you have other gifts but this one it's it's huge it's huge sometimes you'd see it standing up on its own two feet which is pretty damn cool like it is so cool it's like something from a sci-fi movie or something i actually write a, a novel about a crocodile like that okay let me chill before they strike me with lightning okay <laughs> but as i was saying it you will see this crocodile and this crocodile is usually very big it's usually very big it has this bass voice because it's sort of like a manly spirit the crocodile usually when it comes when you have the Nzusa spirit it's 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 a spirit of a man it's a it's a i don't want to say a spirit of a man or but it's a it's a masculine spirit in a way now number four which is very uncommon you'll see dolphins okay you'll see dolphins not a lot of spiritually gifted people will see dolphins but sometimes when you are governed by the nzusa spirit you will see a dolphin and if not a dolphin a gold fish okay a ve look this is not really a goldfish like you know this it's like it's, it's a beautiful fish with like so many beautiful colors that come with it oh guys guys it's so beautiful man so those are the the animals that are mostly um associated with the spirit and most of the times not all the times remember that like i said they're interlinked so you might find that you're seeing these animals but they won't really be precisely the way that i explain them here but you might find where you're seeing them and the reason why you're seeing them is because you're governed by a spirit that is somewhat similar to this nzusa spirit so you need to be very certain before you go out and say i have the nzusa spirit because it's a very rare spirit it's a very rare spirit the best way to know that you have it is to actually consult with someone who has it and though that person will be able to tell you that okay you have the nzusa spirit because the nzusa will definitely speak to that person and tell them what okay you are governed by this particular spirit and all that because not all healers can actually see that that is something you need to understand okay so the common signs of having that Nzusa spirit. So this is where you guys are going to know whether you have it or not. <laughs> okay, people with the Nzusa spirit often have cold hands and feet. Like their hands and feet are always cold, regardless of whether it's summer, whatever season it is, no matter how hot it is, their hands and feet are always cold. Okay, number two, they dream about being underwater. Okay, get this right. They dream about being underwater, inside the water, not outside the water. Okay, that is where they differentiate themselves in terms of the dreams you'll have of water. Because usually people with other spirits like Mdawu, Balozi, um, Kanyamba, they will see themselves right next to the water, like right next to the water, right next to the waterfall, whatever kind of river the ancestors will actually want to send you to or associate themselves to, you will see yourself next to it. But with the people with the Nzusa, they'll see themselves under the water. And most of the times when they see themselves under the water, they will be accompanied by the spirit as well meaning they'll see themselves with the mermaid or they'll see themselves with the snake or the crocodile whichever one decides to come forth whichever way the spirit decides to come and introduce itself to you as okay so you'll be under water okay number three you you feel a cold breeze out of nowhere like out of nowhere you could be in a closed space a room with um a heater on or whatever you have on but for a minute ne, for an instant this is something that comes and goes instantly for most people but other people can actually feel it for a long time this is where more of you just feel like cold air just sweeping in the place in the house wherever you are okay so you feel a cold breeze and number four seeing reeds in dreams remember i talked about reed beds being the definition of nzusa né? but what happens is that when you have the nzusa spirit you can sometimes be shown the reed beds okay the reed okay you can be shown the reeds <laughs> okay and the reeds like i said you'll see yourself you'll just see litakanuka given to you or any of those things i put on silent 
okay you will see read beds reads a lot in your dreams okay and number five dreaming of mermaids whales shark big huge snakes whales white or indian people <laughs> that is also a sign of them but listen to the signs that i just noted down here the mermaids, the sharks, the whales, the dolphins, the white people or Indian people, those are very much similar to the ones you have when you have them down with spirit. They're very similar. So that is why I advise people to go and confirm whether or not you have the Nzusa spirit or not. Because you might just find that you have them down and be like, oh, I have Nzusa because Goko Musawe told me that I'm supposed to see a white person. <laughs> But okay, let me stop being stupid. So be very certain about it, be very sure about it before you just sit and be like, okay, you know what? I have the Nzusa, that is it. Ne? Number six, seeing glass beads. Okay, so the Nzusa spirit doesn't wear the usual normal beads that most people wear that are made of plastic or all those things, they strictly wear beads of made of made out of glass okay it's either made out of glass or made out of sand sand glass um okay i know that sounds weird saying it out loud i didn't think how weird it will sound beads made out of sand but they exist they exist they really do exist guys um so you'll see yourself or be shown beads that are made of glass they do not want plastics or any other material being there in the certain beads that they will give you which are representative of them okay number seven you will have sweaty hands like your hands will be sweaty constantly eh? and if your hands are not sweaty you will have um some sort of like an eczema or um, type of thing in the palm of your hands most of the times as a person with the Nzusa spirit and usually someone would have this and be like oh my god stuff like that you need to chill okay you need to chill that is something you will have to check because those are the hands of someone who possesses the Nzusa spirit they do not have smooth hands like nice hands like people would want and all those kind of things they have rough scaly hands sometimes they're scaly sometimes they peel off on their own because they're children of the water children of mermaids and i'm not gonna say snakes but you know what i mean name number eight attracting strangers okay one thing about people with the Nzusa spirit is that you attract people, you attract strangers, né? and not in a way more they lust upon you or they have interest in um intimacy or anything like that. You just attract them. Strangers just vibe with you. They get connected with you. You meet someone for the very first time as a person with Nzusa, and that person will feel so comfortable around you. They'll feel so free, so relaxed, and they'll be able to speak to you. They'll tell you, any and everything you're attractive like strangers find you very attractive they find you very attractive and you just find yourself most of the times getting people that you don't know coming up to you talking to you talking about how they like you but in a in a um how did, what is that word ah english okay but they will be there like so interested in you and all platonic that's the word i wanted they will be they'll be they'll tell you that they like you but in a platonic way because that is how the spirit is the spirit just attracts people people in the spirit are just very attractive in their own unique kind of way they don't need to be pow 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 but they're just very very attractive especially to strangers people that do not know them okay number Yo, guys, what number is this? I think it's nine. Number nine. Um, for women who have the Nzusa spirit, they either have very period, very heavy periods or no periods at all. But one thing about them is that, 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 is that their periods are very abnormal. Okay, their periods are very abnormal because understand that like most water spirits, the Nzusa spirit like attacks, like I won't say attacks, but it is connected with the waist near the lower abdomen okay and when that is the case what happens is that they do come with their own symptoms you find with people with them down spirits most of the time females with them down spirit they they have pains on their lower abdomen and their lower back most of the times right? but with the people with the Nzusa spirit they have some very irregular very heavy menstrual periods and stuff like that thing right? number eight headaches so these people have headaches, but the headaches are quite unique in a way. Né? The headaches usually attack the forehead and the eyes. 
okay and also the ear but it's usually one ear so if the headaches are not here on the forehead affecting the eyes they will be on one side affecting the ear and neck as well okay and with the ear thing that is where Molot it's very similar to Balozi people people who are possessed who not possessed who are governed by the Balozi ancestors okay number or uh, whatever number this is they tend to feel something moving in their tummy okay so they tend to feel something moving in their tummy or their spinal cord and you know sometimes the people who explain this movement as in like spirally like a snake okay? and other people will just be like you know what it's just weird more or like most of the times people would look at this symptom and think would maybe an alisilwane or some sort of mood whereas it's none of those it's actually the nzusa spirit okay it's actually the nzusa spirit and another thing that another symptom that those people have which is similar to like having swan and all that is that when they are sleeping they sometimes get choked okay it's like they get choked sometimes people with beads like myself would feel as though the beads are literally choking them and this doesn't happen at night alone but also during the day you'll just be chilling then all of a sudden you feel as though your beads are choking you or you're breathing heavily type of things like you're breathing underwater in a way so it's just it's a very very weird sensation to feel Ne? But lo, another thing that you need to understand is that not all symptoms that are similar to when you have like a multi siluan and all those things mean that it doesn't always mean that sometimes it's how that particular spirit or ancestor communicates with you. And that is the case here. Okay. Number 10 or 12, <laughs> their feet have a vibratory sensation. So this is where more you're a person who's governed by the Nzusa. Okay, we all know that vibrations are normal to us, spiritually gifted people, especially in a place where our frequency is very high, when we're talking to someone whose frequency connects with us on all those kind of things. But one thing about the Nzusa people is that even when they're alone, not saying that other people do not have this vibration or shaky feeling when they're alone, but with the Nzusa speed, the vibrations are often on their feet like literally on their feet like instead of them moving around they sometimes tend to be like in one place like more a person who's going by the nzusa will be consulting and for them to know that okay this person has feet problem problems they will feel their feet vibrating and the vibration comes with some sort of like a heat so like you have this burning and a sensation to it but it's not it's not um i won't say it's uncomfortable it's quite comfortable, but I would say what it's quite peculiar. Like you just can't wrap your head around this. But people who have the Nzusa spirit will actually understand what I'm really talking about here because I really can't explain this. Okay. Another point is that they have rash on their spine. Okay. So meaning what at the back, on your back, like more like close to your spine or on your spine, whatever you guys call the outer part, the skinny. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> So what happens is that those people tend to have rashes then eh? and hence people who are not able to see the Nzusa will see that and think of, oh this ito sadisho because you know ito safapan so it's sometimes confused as ito sadisho ito saokisha di pimples and all that I hope you guys understand everyone understand what I mean by this because I don't know how to put it in English but they'll confuse it for that but it's actually another sign for the nzusa spirit they tend to have rashes on their back and especially their spine okay number okay another point is that their shoulders are often very heavy it's like you're always carrying something heavy it's either you just woke up or you like it doesn't matter what time of the day it is what have you been doing your shoulders are always heavy and hence the people who have nzusa spirit they tend to slouch a lot because their shoulders are very heavy naturally so okay and the last point is that they dream of coins and children and with this dream i want you guys to be very i want to be very specific with it with coins name you will see the coin whereby, okay, it's not like this, but more of the heads, they show a, a face or a head of a person and the other side is just, okay, usual coin. But usually the coins that are seen by Inzusa people is the ones with 
the head of a person the ones usually sangomas have in their divine bones and all that yada 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 yeah and also they dream about children a lot because children are very they are very pure creatures they are very they are not tainted by this world and this spirit is all about purity good things great things nothing evil nothing bad it does not associate itself with anything evil or bad so hence that is why you dream or see the most purest creatures the most purest humans if i say so okay then so what are the behaviors of people than zunza okay so as for the behaviors ne? first thing is that at a very young age a person who has Nzusa spirit just excels. Like they just excel. You know that kid who's always a genius. Okay, sometimes those kids actually do study. Okay, they actually do study. It's not always in Zusa making people pass at school, but sometimes you'd find out they actually excel in everything that they do at a very young age. The the children are quite brilliant. They mature fast. They are wise at a very young age. They are just you talk to a three-year-old, okay, not, maybe not a three-year-old, but you talk to a 10-year-old and swear that you are speaking to a 50-year-old man who has seen everything in this world, who has done everything that could possibly have been done by anybody and is just sharing their experience with you, okay? So these people are, they are, they are old souls, okay? They are very old souls. They they project a lot of maturity a lot of wisdom a lot of insight they're just guys they are just amazing man. number two they are very materialistic okay so this is where they're very similar to the mermaid spirit okay they are very materialistic if anything bling 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 all the way okay they want to look good they have to look good everything they have to have needs to be perfect in every single way possibly they are perfectionists and they do not like faults or flaws in anything that they own or anything that they have everything has to be perfect with these people okay number three they're very short tempered but uh, that's an obvious thing anyone with the water spirit is very short tempered you cross the line with them just a tiny bit and you will see the heavens like disappear and you'll be in a place no one wants to go okay so they are very very short tempered they get very angered easily so one thing you do not want to do is step on their toes because one thing that i can actually say is that the temper that they get is not really from the person themselves, but from the ancestors themselves. Remember that this is a very respected spirit. It's a very respected spirit in the spiritual realm, and it should be also it should also be respected in the physical realm. So the minute they feel disrespected, the spirit just goes crazy. You don't want to piss off an Zusa spirit. You don't want to piss off a person with an Zusa spirit because it's one of those spirit that I'd say what well, you'd go there and provoke a person who has an Zusa spirit. And the person, usually the people won't do anything because they just, they're just nice, okay? But the spirit will retaliate. That's just something you have to know. The Nzusa spirit does not want to be tried. You don't try that. It's like a black parent. Like, you do not try a black mother. They will, yo, they will whoop you guys. Okay, so number four, they are wise from a very young age. Okay, so this is... Pretty much what I was talking about at the first point. They are very wise at a young age. They are old souls. They are they are indigo children. They are just yeah. They are just yeah that. Okay? Number five, they protect, they project positive energy and they heal people without even doing a single thing. So these people, like I said, they attract strangers, like people just see them and they just they just love their presence, they love their energy, they love their frequency. It's not the person whom you actually feel attracted to or whom you love or whose energy you love. It's actually the spirit that is governing them. Remember, this is a very pure spirit. So it just projects um, this like a, a vast array of positivity in them. But at the same time, those people are very intimidating. That is the weirdest part of it. Like you just love them. You want to go to them. You love their energy. But at the same time, they are very intimidating. They are very intimidating people without even trying. They have, I won't say a mean face because most of them just look 
normal and innocent and there's no way you could actually just spot a person say okay okay this one has instant spirit but they just have that energy okay um number six they are empaths okay so this one's a major empaths i understand that everyone with an ancestral gift is an empath Okay, most of the people, not everyone, but I'd say 80% of the people with the ancestral gifts are empaths. But the people with the Zusa spirit, they are, they are major empaths. They are major empaths. They just take every single energy. That is why with the Zusa spirit, you need to be trained as to what kind of, like you need to train yourself in terms of the energy. Because one thing is that whoever you encounter you take their energy even if you're not shown anything about their lives in that moment but the energy that they project even if the person is angry and they're pretending to be happy you'll know you will even know what a person is thinking like it's weird but you would somewhat know what a person is thinking through the phone in person through chatting like you would be able to decipher this person's emotion even in moments, Molo, you shouldn't be able to do that. But those people, they can do. People in Zusa spirit, they can actually do that. So don't lie to them. They know when you're lying. They they will know if you're lying to them. They'll know if you're lying to them. Né? Um, number seven, they hate arguments quarrels and fights hence even if you lie to them they won't they won't even confront you because one thing about people in Zusa spirit is that they they want peace at all times they want peace at all times those are the people that will not provoke you and do not want to be provoked back okay those are the people that um whenever there's a fight around them they'll either go isolate themselves go to a space mode where they feel safe they feel like they are far from all that fighting, all the arguing. They just do everything they can to avoid arguments, fights, quarrels, and peripheral, all kind of it. They just, it's not their thing. It is not their thing at all. And most of the time, you find out they don't even like crowded places. Okay, most people with spiritual gifts don't like crowded places. But these ones are worse. They are major introverts, okay? They are major introverts, but at the same time, they are very extroverted, meaning what they value their space most of the times they will not like the idea of going out but when they do go out they are just amazing like their presence is great and all those things but deep down inside they can't wait to actually leave they can't wait to leave <laughs> number eight they are very neat they are neat people they are neat freaks they want to make sure that everything like i said they are perfectionists they want to make sure that it is neat all the time but at the same time they are very lazy okay they do not like the idea of waking up and cleaning up and working but they will do that at the end of the day because they value a neat clean space okay number nine they are greatly talented artistic and creative okay here's something i want to give props to spiritually gifted people in general spiritually gifted people are talented guys like in my life i'll say that every single spiritually gifted person i've met is an artist in some way okay i'm not saying it metaphorically i'm i'm literally saying this Spiritually gifted people are artistic in so many ways. There's just so much creativity from these people. It could be through words, it could be through paintings, it could be through sculpture. Like, I've met so many different ones of them, and every single one of them has their own level of creativity, a talent that they have, and it's unmatched. They do it effortlessly, effortlessly so, okay? And it's so beautiful. Um, So, spiritually gifted people in general are very talented very creative very artistic when you meet a spiritual gifted person you just know ah uh, this person is talented in some way they just haven't figured it out yet but there is something there okay number okay i actually lost count of the things already again okay so th the other point is that they are stubborn okay they are stubborn they do not want to be told what to do when to do them they're like Aryans, Aries people nay? they are so stubborn to them they are always right all the time they do not want to be corrected but then again they how can they be wrong they are working with a dynamite kind of um spirit so they are very stubborn they do not want to be proven wrong they do not want to be defied what they say is law all day every day okay and the last one is that they hate visitors, which is kind of funny because then Zusa spirit actually requires its people to work 
with people full time né? um because one thing about the zuza spirit is that okay something that i don't think i actually noted down here is that when you have the zuza spirit you are not supposed to work a nine to five it will not allow you because the spirit itself it's a leader it does not follow it does not listen it does not want to be under anybody okay so you find out in most 80% of the time, people with Nzusa Spirit have businesses and also they work or stay at home full time, working, helping people, healing people, which is beautiful. Um, so, <clears throat> but the thing about them is that they hate visitors. So you'll find yourself consulting with a Nzusa person and deep down inside, they're like, oh gosh, can this just end already? Even though they're telling you facts about your life. <laughs> Like I said, they are major introverts, but they have a good way of hiding it. Meaning what when you are speaking to them, they will be open and just project a lot of good energy. Mm. Me being clumsy all the time. Okay. So like I said, they hate visitors and they hate visiting. So this is the kind of person, oh Lord, if you have a friend with them, so you'll be like, child, when are we chilling again? And the person will be like, ah, I'll tell you. They'll never tell you. They will never. To them, though, like, they'll be like, oh, I'm always busy. I'm never free. And to them, like, honestly speaking, realistically, they're there in their room just chilling, sleeping, whatever it is that they're doing. They just don't like the idea of going out, being out with people, getting visitors. They, they love their space so much. They treasure their space. They treasure their time to themselves. They treasure their times connecting with their ancestors. And that is just those people in a nutshell, man. But now we know all the signs, we know all the characteristics, we know what Nzunza is. But how do you initiate for this spirit? Okay, because this spirit is very unique in so many ways, guys. It's very unique because usually with people, sangomas, healers, whatever you we call them, whatever we call us, um, you have to go to a gobella, get initiated, come back home, all those, you know, all those processes. Né? But the Nzusa spirit works differently. When you have the Nzusa spirit, you will not be initiated by anybody for the spirit. Né? But one thing I'm going to tell you is that when you have Nzusa spirit, obviously, most of the times you will have all the other spirit like Mugunim, Dao, um, all the others. Né? So what's going to happen is that the Nzusa spirit is going to allow you to attend to all those other spirits you will initiate for all the other spirits that you have prophetic whatever it is that you have you will initiate for it and once you are done that is where more it will come to you and when it comes to you it will come in your dreams and your visions and in so many ways né? so when they initiate a person they initiate a person in two ways they initiate a person themselves the first one is whereby they take the person to the river and initiate them under the river in the river not under the river in the river number two they initiate a person through dreams okay so this is where it gets very interesting okay okay it got interesting when we actually got to the point whereby it takes people to the river in the river okay so but a river initiation with the Nzusa spirit is that the spirit usually like once you're done initiating for all the other spirits it might just give you some time to actually work and please those spirits for a while before it says okay you know what now it's my time to shine okay so this is where molot it will when you are ready when it feels like you are very ready it will give you the time place and date name of when where and when when where and where you will initiate meaning what it will tell you on this specific day maybe let's say on friday the 13th at um mudimulde river um at 2 p.m you need to be there okay and you'll have to come with maybe an egg or a chicken or whatever it is that it will require in that time and one thing about it is that when it speaks it speaks it only speaks once and it's done you need to be there okay so it'll give you the time place time the time place and date of your initiation of when you will start with your initiation and you need to be there in that specific river it will take you to a river or a cave that has a river inside it okay <clears throat> then secondly once you get there it will take you but you will not drown here's the thing people in Zusa spirit they do not drown even if you've never had a history of swimming or you're a bad swimmer or you even have like 
bad memories for it when the Nzusa spirit takes you one thing you shouldn't worry about is drowning you are gonna be floating in the river you'll be just chilling there you'll be okay and when it takes you can take you for a week a month years depending on what how long it wants to teach you and how many things it wants to teach you or how long it takes you to grasp the things that it wants to teach you so the duration and time whereby it will be taking you it depends on it completely okay number four um when you come out this is where more is very different for some people when they come out there has to be drums playing there has to be lilopo sangomas from different areas with different gifts prophetic um divine bones mguni whatever Ever gives that can ever be in this world okay not all of them but there needs to be drums yeah guys oh there need to be drums played <laughs> there need to be drums played at the specific river whereby you need to come back and this is where more those people will actually have to go there every single day until the spirit says okay now it's time for you to leave to go back to your world okay so sometimes you have to be taken out by drums while other times you just when they're done with you they'll be like okay now you can leave we are done with you you can go now and um with those people you might find out okay immediately after leaving they can go back home or after leaving there might be a test maybe they'll say we'll go to the specific mountain go there be there for this long and when you're there we'll be coming to in your dreams teaching you certain things, teaching you certain hairs will be coming in a spiritual form or whatever physical form that they can actually take in that particular time and teach you more. Okay. And lastly, um, you can return with, you can return from the river with an animal. Okay. So people with Anzusa spirit, can, they can either have a snake. Okay. So this is where it's very similar to the Inca Nyamba because people with the Inca Nyamba, they need to have a snake. Ne? But Jonah is not a twala. You need to understand that a twala, it is not there for anything bad. It does not like it is not there for any of those things. It's just a totem. An animal that is taking Zunzaya Rao, you're coming back with it. You can either come back with a snake, a fish a not a crocodile a, a snake or a fish or any other mammal like any other ocean creature i don't know about a crocodile i've never had anyone within zusa speed saying what i have a crocodile but one thing i'm very sure about is the snake and the fish okay but it's not always the case but 80 let's say 95 percent of the time you have to come back with something okay and number two is whereby you're having a dream initiation this is where they initiate you for your dreams and your visions now this one is also quite interesting man because you know you'd be sleeping like every single day and in your dreams you'll be in your sleep you'll be having visions and dreams of your entire initiation you'll literally be going through the process of initiation through your dreams which is actually quite beautiful um you'll be seeing processes that they take you through Eva parola in that process they will be doing it in your dreams um and um lopot lavinua you'll be seeing yourself with the people from under the water under the rivers okay guys one thing you guys should know is that there are people under the rivers because when the nzusa does take you to the rivers it doesn't mean you're gonna be in the water the entire time there's a there's a place down up under there there's um atlantis <laughs> under there so you'll be seeing the people there some people that say what they see very tall beautiful women others they see very short people so it just differs on the type of tribe your nzusa takes you to ne? but most of the times the people under the river they are very 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 short okay and it's possible for them to actually come back to this to this dimension to the outer world i don't know how to explain our world and their world because it's the same world it's just different parts of it ne? but when they can come to our side then we can go to their side if we are allowed to okay if we are allowed to that is the only time we can actually go to their side so they'll be teaching you guys everything because understand that their river herbs herbs that are only found in the river and herbs that are only taught 
to um Nzusa people, people who possess the Nzusa spirit. Okay, so you will be taught all those things. And one thing I can tell you about those types is that they are extremely powerful. They are very powerful. They're not like the ones we find on land. Not saying the ones we find on land are not powerful, but the river ones are gangster. They are very powerful, man. Um, okay, and yeah, they teach you everything. So what if you ignore the calling? Okay, like I said, this is the dynamite of all water spirits. This is yo guys. This spirit, it doesn't take no for an answer. Like it's not like all the other spirits because you know there are times Molori you could have a gift and say, you know what, I'm not gonna pursue this, I'm not gonna follow my gift and your ancestors might not even do much to you or harm you or anything like that. There are instances whereby that happens. But when you have the Nzusa spirit, it's very similar to when you have the Mdawe spirit. They do not take no for an answer. They do not. If you refuse the Nzusa spirit, they will take everything you cherish from you. They will make sure that you, they take everything because they can. Because, like I said, they're a spirit of wealth and abundance. So, most of the times, the riches a person with Nzusa spirit has comes from the spirit. So, if you don't want anything to do with it, they will take them. Okay? Secondly, you will have a major depression that not even medicine can fix. But that's one thing we all know that every single person with a spiritual gift gets at some point. Depression, um, anxiety, all those things. It's very normal. But... With the Nzusa spirit, that is where Molo it is. Yo, they pour more sauce into the stress. And number three, he can take you in the river and you'll never return. Okay, this is actually when they are like extremely fed up, when they're extremely mad. They're like, you know what? We don't even want to see you suffer. We're going to take you. Nay. So that means that maybe you're a person with the Nzusa spirit. Maybe you're playing around the river or out of here out of nowhere and you vanish they take you and when is this is the case what happens is that you don't return they can come and play drums 80 percent like 50 percent of the time even the drums won't be enough to take you out or when you do return you return dead they will kill you ne? because with those people because there are different people that are taken by the Nzusa or the river spirit that do different things. Others, okay, they die there. Others, they do manage to return, but most of which who return, they are not supposed to speak of anything that they saw. Or even if, like, um, they do return, there's a possibility that their voice is gone, especially for people who can sing. Né? But that's usually associated with people who are taken by the bad water spirits because remember there are good spirits and there are bad spirits and Zuzza is not a bad spirit but there is possibility that when you come back from the river or the ocean or wherever it is that you went and you dealt with Zuzza, they will take your voice to make sure that you never speak of what it is that you saw but within most cases the people that are taken by Zuzza, which are the people who refuse their gift to begin with they do not return they'll either stay there Build a family with mermaids. I don't see how that could be a bad thing. I wouldn't mind having a mermaid baby. <laughs> but yeah, they usually stay there. They work there. Or when they come back, they come back dead. Okay. And lastly, if you disobey them. Like I said, this is a very strict spirit. It comes with its rules. So let's say, for example, like I said, it does not tolerate evil doings. Né? So let's say, for example, you become one of those healers. And you decide to be evil. What does it do to you? Okay, this is where Molo, it turns it back, it's back on you. It doesn't want to associate itself with anything evil. So that means that when it leaves you, it leaves with all the blessings, all the power, everything. It takes it all with it. Yeah? So when you'll just be there, you'd find out even if you're helping people, those people do not get help. Your heads are not helping them. That's the first thing. Or completely, you do not help people at all. People never come to you for help. You lose your power. You lose your wealth. You just, you lose everything. And this is not a metaphor because people will be like, I lost everything. Well, they still have a house and a car and all that. But you will literally lose everything every single thing and at times you'll even lose your mind they will make you crazy if they see what you're disobeying them they'll make you lose your mind they'll make you lose your sight okay the sight is very it's one of the major things that they take cause 
but dim ba metse wa bona ka mathlo denzuza wa bona ka mathlo that is why molo you can actually encounter a person with denzuza spirit who can actually see your spirit's life like cuz i understand that there are people who walk around with their spirits you might find that me over here i'm chilling over here talking and um one of my spirits is over there listening to me yapping around but there are people who walk around with their spirits and when they encounter a zuza person a person with a zuza spirit they are able to see their spiritual guys they are able to see their ancestors that are walking with them okay and if it happens that that particular person disobeys the zuza or does something bad or just just does something that they're supposed to they lose their sight okay so yeah it just got i feel like this entire video went from this whole light beautiful fairy tale like video to a very scary like a horror movie like you know when you're watching tinkerbell then all of a sudden freddy kruger just pops out of nowhere <laughs> but that is pretty much this is pretty much all i can share about the nzuza all that has ever been shared about the nzuza um from there onwards if you're a person who possesses or a govern is governed by the nzuza spirit everything else from here you will be taught by them Okay, and one advice that I'll give to anyone who has a Zusa spirit is that you need to be patient with the spirit. The Zusa spirit is very, is a very patient spirit. It doesn't, like, it knows when you are ready. It knows when you are ready, and it will tell you, it will come to you when you are ready, not before that, not after that. It is never late, it is never too early. It knows the right and specific time. That's the first thing. So do not rush the spirit. If you rush it, you'll definitely upset it because the other spirits will be like, ah, wajara okay, then not really pay attention to it. But then Zusa, it gets irritated very quickly. Ne? That's the first thing. And secondly, you might spy, find what you are spending so much time waiting for a corbella ne? as a person because you know you have a spiritually gift. You, are, you have a spiritual gift. And find what you actually have the Nzusa. Remember the Nzusa does not have a Kobela. As a Nzusa person, you do not have a Kobela. You do not require one. The ancestors teach you everything. No person. I could be a healer for as many years as I have and all that. But one thing you should know is that I cannot be a Kobela to a person who has a Nzusa spirit. So you might find that you are wasting so much time waiting for your Kobela while your Nzusa is calling you. So be certain Try and find out what spirit that you have. If you have a water spirit, what kind of water spirit you have. This video will give you light on that. But Rana, you still need to go out and you need to pay more attention to everything. Pay attention to detail and you will be in the light. Okay, so that is it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is actually the most, the best video I've ever made. I'm so excited and I keep talking. Okay, but anyways, this is, um, this has been a very beautiful video. I'm very excited to have shared this one with you and I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope anyone who has Nzusa cherishes it. It's a beautiful gift and do not be frightened by it, guys. People will scare you. Okay, they, they're not wrong. Some of the things are right, but... The Nzusa is a good spirit. It's a wonderful spirit. And just appreciate it. Appreciate it. Welcome it. Be happy that you have it. It is a very rare, very protective, very wonderful. And when you have it, you are sorted all the way. Anyways, hope you guys have a beautiful one. Tokozani Lisedi. Bye-bye. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah